Hi, it's Roger here with the first step to solve any problem. And I'm here on a hilltop in Washington, D.C. right now. And this has been a very special week. We launched the book. It went up to number one in Barnes & Noble, Amazon, the online stores. And now it's in all the bookstores around America. So thank you so much to everyone who supported the book, who bought a copy, and to the team for all the hard work you put in to actually make this possible. And what am I doing here in Washington right now? Well, I came here with a group called the Maverick 1000, which is an entrepreneur group. We came here to meet up with the Green Beret Foundation, which is supporting Green Berets, who are like the elite fighting force in the army to be able to get into jobs or into businesses when they come back to America. And what's really fascinating was that when they were sharing the way that they go about solving the problems they solve when they're out in the heat of battle, it was so interesting to see it's very similar to those people I see who are the best entrepreneurs, the best leaders, the way they go about solving a problem with the, first, the same first step. And also when I was an architect, the things that I learned as well. And why are we gonna be sharing this on top of this hillside? Because there is something that I have been wanting to see for years and today is my super special day where I took the time out to be here to see this. I'm gonna show you what this is in a moment as well. So first of all, what was it that the Green Beret said was the key thing when they got into any new zone where they're actually there with the mission? It was something they called situational awareness. Situational awareness is not just saying, I know where I'm at, now let's rush for the objective. It's about pausing and saying, wait, not only do we need to know where we are, we need to know where we are relative to the objective and we need to know where the threats are. We need to know what is the path of most resistance. We need to know what is the path of least resistance. We've got to take that. That's what I call flow. It's like just knowing, okay, that's clearly the path and off you go to take it. In a new market, in a new business, in a new job, for you to find that out pretty quickly is really important. And like, how do you do that? That's best summed up by a saying that goes back several thousand years to the time of Pythagoras. Pythagoras, who's like the king of triangles, he said, establish the triangle and the problem is two thirds solved. And what he meant by that was this concept called triangulation is what solves almost all problems before they even start. And what's triangulation? Triangulation is what, as an architect, I would do when I was creating a new building. I'd start with a contour map where you'd survey the land and the only way you could even know where everything was on the contours was to be able to actually take two other points. You're creating a triangle to measure where it's at. GPS works the same way. It's how we know where our mobile phones are, our cars are, even our airplanes, is through basically satellites that are actually giving you relative positions to each other and to whatever point you're looking at. And this idea of triangulation, it occurs everywhere. You know, as a leader, as an entrepreneur, how can you use it in everyday life? Well, think about you having two different uh, points of view, like you're arguing with like someone in your team or with your family member. Uh, and as you're doing that, you end up basically realizing that there's no way you're going to be kind of like getting out of your entrenched position. So you get a third person, someone who's gonna mediate, someone who sees both sides. And boom, before you know it, you're now finding ways out of it that you couldn't even see before. You find common ground, you find stability. Same thing goes with time. You have a team that comes together, and if you just say, right, here's where we are, here's where we wanna go, it's gonna end badly, because you're gonna get in a situation where it's gonna either be better than you thought or worse than you thought, and then you haven't like planned for that eventuality. But if you start by saying, let's establish a triangle. What's the best that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? So from where we are right now, it's gonna be somewhere in that zone. And if it was the best, what would we do at that point? Three months down, down the line, you know, would we end up working together? Would we end up giving equity out? You would give profit, what would we do? But if it didn't work out, if it was like failure, what would that look like? And what do we wanna do at that point? Not work together anymore, you know, leave with no regrets, uh, you know, split up some of the assets we have, or you know, go to a plan B. Agreeing that beforehand makes life really easy because now you've gone from possibility to probability. You're no longer worrying about the outcome because it's gonna be somewhere within that zone. And the same thing goes for how you lead your life. You know, as long as you're on the line of saying, here's where I am and my future is right in front of me because it's a line, you can't see that clearly. But the moment you step out of that and you create a third point, a point where you can go with a mentor or a point where you can go and detach from where you are on your line and say, well, here's where I am and here's where I wanna be. What does that look like from the outside? Uh, who are the people that have been down that path already I can, I can learn from and be with them for a while to understand these things. And once we start doing this, everything shifts around us. And you know, this kind of brings me to uh, why we are out here right now on this hilltop. Because as many of you know, the inspiration or the metaphor behind the Millionaire Master Plan is the lighthouse, the image of the lighthouse. Uh, and there's one lighthouse in particular, which goes back again, thousands of years. This is the lighthouse of Alexandria, which really inspired a lot of the book. Lighthouse of Alexandria was one of the seven great wonders, ancient wonders of the world. It's no longer with us, but there is one replica in the world, which happens to be here on this hillside in Washington, DC. And here it is. This is 
uh, memorial to George Washington. It is the Washington National Masonic Memorial. And it was actually built by the Freemasons of America. In fact, it's the only memorial in all of America where every single uh, chapter of the Freemasons in every single state, all of them contributed towards this. And you think, wow, okay, well, why did they actually choose the Lighthouse of Alexandria? How did they get to that? I'll get to that in a moment. But first of all, just look at the shape. You see how it's got four sides, just like the four geniuses. It's got nine levels, which are divided into three, just like the three prisms within my lighthouse. Uh, and the reason that I chose those was because you, can, you need to triangulate each one first to make it solid. Uh, so, for example, uh, the foundation prism, the first prism is about saying, right, we want to make sure that your personal flow is, first of all, solid about how your time is flowing, how your energy is flowing, how your money is flowing personally before we go out trying to run after building a business or, or, or trying to improve in your job. You know, this, it's what you're doing personally for yourself and your life and your family. Then you get to market flow, which is the foundation prism, the middle one which is a bit like going from swimming to now kind of like, you know, getting on a ship and being able to sail across the ocean. It's how all the money in the markets move. And then that leads to the third one, which is global flow, which is the alchemy prism, which is where you can go out and make a global impact if you actually have risen up through those levels as well. And you might think, okay, so see how that could work, but what are the steps? You know, what are the steps to actually make this happen? You know, when we I'm gonna show you something here, which is kind of wild. It's basically a massive uh, structure, which is in the ground here. And if you uh, go back to the conversation I had with the Green Berets, so what is it you need to actually get that, like, you know, locational awareness to actually know where you're at? And what they said was they said, you just need two things. You don't actually need any of the technology. Just get the map and make sure you have a square and a compass. You've got a square and a compass. You know, you know where north is. You know basically how to map things out in a certain way. It's funny because I thought as an architect, that's exactly what happened to me too. It's like I just needed a square and a compass and I can create a blueprint for everything. Well, this symbol here, some of you might recognize, is massive. And here it is basically on the lawn here. And this is the symbol of Freemasonry, which is a square and a compass. And as you can see, it's right here in front of the, uh, of the lighthouse as well. Uh, and the reason that those two are so important is that they kind of like symbolize this whole story I'm about to share with you, which is how we're the macrocosm of the microcosm, how we're here to square the circle, how, how we can actually find a location where we are personally for ourselves within this universe of ours. And that the structure of this and the way that works is all based on a story which goes back to, to like 2,300 years. And this is a story that starts with Aristotle. It actually links all the way to why we've even got this lighthouse on this hillside in, in Virginia today. And it's a story about how Aristotle was a mentor, had a series of different people who was mentoring, but the most famous of them was Alexander, who became Alexander the Great. And he told him, Aristotle told Alexander the story about something called the Emerald Tablet. So in the same way that if you want to basically create harmony with your customers, you create service contracts uh, where you've agreed ahead of time what you're going to deliver, how you're going to deliver it. So if there's any dispute, you're not, it's not opinion between them, it's this document you have. Or in a company where you want everyone to work in a particular way, in harmony together, you create a culture code, right? A way that they're actually all aligned to the same code that they help create. It's not just your opinion on how they should be. Well, we had exactly that same thought process way back, like what, 3,000 years ago, through this myth of something called the Emerald Tablet, which was this kind of like manifesto of how uh, we as individuals become the microcosm of the macrocosm, how we don't need to have kings or queens or emperors uh, ruling over us for us to be able to tap into the power of the universe. And so if you've ever heard that concept of, you know, as above, so below, that's like the hermetic philosophy, which came out of the Emerald Tablet. Uh, Alexander went off to look for the Emerald Tablet in Egypt. That's what, where Aristotle said he should go look. Apparently, according to myth, he found it. When he found it, he then created a city where it was to be studied, which was Alexandria on the, on the coast of Egypt. And it was called Alexandria because it's a female form of Alexander. And when he created it, also what got created was the Library of Alexandria, which became basically the, the hub of the Hellenistic Empire. You know, Cleopatra, who was the last of the pharaohs, she was basically uh, the one ruling over Alexandria at the time. And that then led, led on to what became the Lighthouse of Alexandria. And coming back here to this image, the Lighthouse of Alexandria basically was a symbol to this whole philosophy as well, with this light at the top. What's really interesting about that process of actually saying, well, that was kind of like in ancient times, how does it fit to where we are today? Was that inspired a group of people? You know, this is a group of people called the Knights Templar. Uh, they basically founded something uh, in uh, London, within the city of London, which was called the, um, uh, the Temple Church. Uh, and the Temple Church was the place in 1215, which is exactly 800 years ago, it was the place in which the King of England at that point was forced to sign something called the Magna Carta. 
The Magna Carta was modeled off the same concept as Emerald Tablet, which is that there is a manifesto for free men, for a way for us to be able to say we have rights and we have a way for us to be able to tap into our own power. And off the back of the Magna Carta, which, like I said, 800 years ago was signed and was really the first steps towards rights for all men, that then led to the inspiration for the Declaration of Independence. You know, and the likes of people, you know, like Benjamin Franklin and uh, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, they used the inspiration from the Magna Carta to create the Declaration of Independence. And today, pretty much every, uh, every free country has got a declaration of some sorts or a constitution of some sorts where everyone agrees, here is how we want to conduct ourselves. So what's so interesting about that is if you don't yet have something like that, like a point, a third point that allows you to triangulate, um, pick up the book because that's why I wrote the book is to actually give you that ability to actually say, here's where I'm at, here's where I need to go. So you actually got that ability at any point, whatever problem you're trying to solve, to be able to immediately get that context and have that base, just like I mentioned earlier in the story about the three legs to the stool with my, uh, uh, with my experience of 3i. I do this with every single problem I ever have, any challenge, even every opportunity, which is say, let's triangulate it out so we can see it from a different point of view. Um, Genius, uh, you was an example of that. You know, the, the way we had all these different people uh, partnering with us for the launch of the book uh, was that we created these genius guides where we can now have the genius guide to success with Jack Canfield or, you know, the genius guide to uh, investing uh, with Phil Town, where we're actually creating a third point which actually benefits everybody by us actually doing it in this way. And it's partly our brand, it's partly their brand, but it builds this kind of middle way. Um, the book, that's what that's all about as well. And the competition we're running is all about basically creating that hinge, that third point which allows us to connect all the people who are buying the book right now with all the events we're having in a way that we can provide scholarships to everyone as well. So if this resonates with you, think about whatever your biggest challenge is. How could you triangulate that right now today so that you get perspective, which is looking at it from a place where you're not. You've got a third point. Focus on getting that in place. And I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, send me a message if you like. You know, post it, post it on YouTube. Uh, subscribe if you want to see some of the videos coming up. I really look forward to uh, just sharing more on some of our journey as we're going forward with the book and how that goes. But in the meantime, just keep remembering, this is all about you looking in context by creating that stability, by creating that triangle. Establish the triangle and the problem is already two thirds solved.